Imagine your AI voice caller has a conversation with one of your clients, everything goes smoothly until the client asks a question for which the voice AI caller does not have a proper answer. Now they're stuck in a back and forth trying to find a solution, but nothing works. Not a really nice user experience, right? What if we would have another option in those edge cases to give the user the possibility of still having an answer or a solution? And that's exactly what this video is about. We are going to talk about call forwarding, human handovers, call transfers, call it the way you want. In the end, the end goal is that we get the user or the client that currently calls with the voice AI to be transferred to an actual human being so that the human being can help out and answer the user's questions or do whatever the user might have in curious about in the first place. Now in this video I'm going to show you three different concepts on how you can structure and get started with those call forwardings and I'm gonna start with the easiest one first going up to the more advanced ones because the advanced ones are definitely a little more complex but obviously if you are serious about voice AI agents it is definitely something you would like to look into. Before diving into the practical examples I'm going to show you a little bit more on how that actually looks. So if we jump right here on my screen, you can see I prepared a mirror board with a couple of examples and I'm going to just guide you through the solutions visually so you understand what actually happens behind the scenes in a functional meaning so that you better see the whole picture of what we are going to achieve with each of the solutions. Now the first one is the easiest one I mentioned, which is going to be a forwarding to a very to a single number. Now you can imagine that when you call with your voice AI caller and you would for example like to transfer the call or the user says something like I want to be forwarded, please. Then we would have the option to transfer this call to a predefined phone number. And this phone number is then basically connected to an agent. And this agent can take on the call, handle the user inquiry and still make the user happy. This is the very, very basic example that I'm going to show you in the beginning, because it's the one that everyone can set up. And for a lot of people, it is probably enough. However, there are some more use cases that we go into now. This, with which we come to the second solution that you can see right now here on the screen. The second solution supports up to 10 forwarding numbers and those 10 numbers is an approximate number so it can vary. I generally say I would never use more than 10 for this example. Sometimes we use 11, 12, but usually not more than 10. And this is due to a couple of limitations that I will show you when I'm showing you the actual example, but that's all you need to know for now. Let's assume now the caller says, I want to be forwarded to Adam, please. In that case, we could use the predefined numbers that we set somewhere to figure out which of those agents the user would like to be referred to and then we can call this agent. And as you can see, in this case, he requests Adam, so we would obviously forward the call to Adam if we find an Adam. Now, there is already a significant difference between this solution and the first one I showed you, which is mainly that now we need to give the numbers or the agents some meaning so that we know exactly who we want to talk to and how we can refer to the person inside of our assistant or system prompt. And now since we already had multiple numbers, we are going to the third solution, which is the one that is most scalable, which you can really extend in mostly any kind of way possible, but it is also the most complex one to set up with a couple of extra difficulties that I'm going to show you along the way so that you don't get stuck in arrow handling and know exactly what you need to do because the documentation for that is still a little bit vague. It is around, it is pretty new, and I guess that's the reason why the documentation isn't as optimal as it should be, but I'm gonna guide you through step by step. And this solution, as you can see here, relies on some external data source in some way for getting an extra number. So let's assume the user says, I would like to talk to my account manager. So if you're in a bigger company, you obviously have some sort of account manager. Now let's imagine this user actually wants to talk to the account manager. In that case, we could instruct the AI assistant to make a forwarding call. And this forwarding call would look like that it doesn't know exactly where to forward it to, but we would have some sort of request or information that we can hijack to find the account manager for that user and then initiate the call to that user. Now, this account manager thing is an example that I came up with that we use inside of our agency, but you can use that same setup in a lot of different ways. Let's say, for example, you have tons of departments you need to transfer the user to. You could, for example, make a name search, find the person by the name in a database, in a vector database, whatever that looks like, and then get the number back and call or transfer this number. But this one, for simplicity reason, is the easiest to understand for you, and I think it's also the most visual one. And now since you've seen all of the three solutions, which is your favorite one, feel free to drop it below in the comments. Now before diving into the practical examples, there's one more thing I would like to mention. Everything you're going to see in this video is of course completely available for free inside of my resource hub to download, which means, for example, the make.com blueprints I'm going to show you for the predefined setups, 
the prompts that I'm going to use, the payloads I'm going to use. You will find everything directly under hub.integraticus.com completely for free. So simply head over, get access to it, and you can follow me along on the screen, which definitely makes your life easier. Now to get started, let's head into the very first solution, which is making a simple, simple one number forwarding call. To do that, it is very, very basic and very easy. All you need is an assistant inside of the WAPI dashboard. So once you head into WAPI, you go to assistance, you open the assistant of your choice, and then you head over here to the functions tab. And in the functions tab, if you scroll down, you will find the forwarding phone number field. So this is the phone number you can forward calls to in case a user requested. So you would simply put the phone number that you would like of the agent or maybe of yourself that whoever wants to receive the call. And then when the user says something in the conversation, like I'd like to speak to an actual human being, or I'd like to be transferred to whoever, it's going to send that call to this phone number and it's usually very, very straightforward. So once you added the phone number, all you do is you click on publish and then you can be on the call and you can actually just instruct the or ask the phone number to transfer you to a human being. And then it will be basically forwarding you to that number that you defined here. As I mentioned, this is the first solution. It is very, very simple, very straightforward. You simply drop in the number and the thing is done and you can use it already out of the box. Now let's head into the second solution, which you find over here. Now this solution is already a bit more complex because we need to somehow define a set of multiple numbers that we can refer the agent to depending on whatever the user would like to request. So let's for example say we are in a company and there are people that are commonly called, so recurring clients, that call your number, that maybe call your support and they have always been in touch with, let's say, Alex from your support team. Now they would be on the phone and would say, hey, I'd like to speak with Alex, please. And then the AI would understand, oh, okay, the person wants to actually talk to Alex. Let me just see if he's free and transfer that call over to Alex. Now, in that case, you need to do two things, obviously. You need to somewhere define the phone number and you need to define the meaning of the phone number or whoever is basically behind it or whatever the AI should do with it. And luckily, Vapi has a pretty decent documentation for that part. But I have to mention that even though the documentation is good, it is not as simple to set up because you don't have anything visual inside of the WAPI dashboard. So you need to head over to the API and you need to actually deal with API requests. But don't worry, I prepared, I prepared everything for you. You don't need to code anything yourself. You will very, very easily understand how it works by just following me here on the screen. Now, the first thing we need to do is understand that this setup for the second solution uses a tool call. And if you haven't seen my previous video about tool calls, definitely check it out. It helps you to understand more what tools actually are. In the end, it is nothing else than a functionality that we give the assistant access to so that he can interact with external services or with real life information that is not hosted on WAPI. Which obviously forwardings also are part of it because forwardings are taken care of whatever telephony provider you have in the backend, which can be something like Twilio, Vonage, or a custom zip trunk. The first thing I'd like to show you is that you cannot set up set it up visually. So if you go to tools, now once you're in the dashboard, you can simply head over to tools. And when you click here on new tool, you are basically prompted to add a server URL. And whatever you choose, there is not the right feature that you need to make this work because what you would like is not a regular tool call. What you would like is a forwarding phone number tool call. And WAPI has basically predefined information inside of the documentation that you can use to interact through the API to update those two calls or maybe even create that directly visually in the dashboard. So since we cannot use this visual interface, what we would do is we would use an external tool that we can use to make API requests with. And I'm telling you now that it's better to have an external tool than just doing it with the WAPI documentation. Cause maybe if you're already familiar with WAPI, you know that if you head to the WAPI documentation API reference, you can also simply create the tools by clicking here on create tools and then in putting your information into the body. Now, as you can see here, there's tons of information you can put in as well, but since I don't want to build up everything by self, by, from scratch and you probably don't want to do the same thing either, we are going to use a predefined JSON that I created for you, which is available in my resource hub, so that you can create this tool predefined with a lot of more ease without relying on these predefined settings right here. Now to get started, you want to familiarize yourself with how this call forwarding actually looks like. And you will find a link in the documentation under documentation, advanced concepts, calls, call forwarding. It's a little bit hidden, but once you're here, you will see a whole manual that explains you how this whole thing works and what you can set up. And this is the basic definition of a JSON that they provide for making those kind of call transfers or call forwardings. And I'm going to go with you through this thing step by step. Before doing so, I still want to mention, if you literally just drop this whole thing in to creating a tool, it will not work, mostly because they have some phone number validations and the ones they use in the example don't work, unfortunately. I assume this is going to be fixed at some point, 
but right now you cannot just like copy paste it and create it and test it out. That's why it's better to just rely on the JSON that I'm going to provide you inside of my resource hub, which by the way, looks like this. Now, as you've seen, I'm in another platform which is called Postman. It is a free SaaS that you can just sign up for online. And I would definitely recommend doing that because Postman allows you to test API requests and not only test it, you can actually interact with API requests live directly from within your browser and do certain updates. Now, because this is so powerful, we can literally just take the JSON from my resource hub, drop it in here, which then looks something like this. So it's a more adjusted version of the one that we see on the documentation from Wapi. And now with the right documentation and the right JSON, we're going to, I'm going to guide you through each of the separate settings of this JSON so you understand what actually happens behind the scenes. Now, as you can see here in line two, it's the most important part because ours is not just a function call, which is what usually is required if you set it up inside of the WAPI dashboard under tools. Now, in our case, it is a transfer call, which is nothing else than a tool call that can forward calls to a phone number. That is basically something that WAPI predefined for you, but we can visually adjust it right within here as a tool call so that we don't need to take care of the manual logic behind of transferring phone numbers to Twilio, etc. Now coming to the next part, it's the destination. And this is where it gets more interesting because this is where you want to actually define your phone numbers and the meaning or the purpose of what that, per what that phone number is for and what where the AI should use it to forward it. Now, as you can see here, the type is obviously number because we are going to do going to refer to phone numbers. Then you have another one here called number, which is very clear as well. It's the phone number that you basically want to forward the call to. And in the third one, you have the message, which is the definition of whatever the meaning behind that phone number is. So as you can see here for the message, I said forward when department A is requested, which basically tells the AI that if there's someone on the phone that says, hey, I'd like to please speak to department A, the AI understands, ah, okay, uh, look, here is a here's a phone number that is specifically for that, for calls to department A. This is the one I'm going to use for making a call transfer. This is very important to understand because this message is basically made for the AI and for you obviously to understand what this phone number is related to. And this is the reason why I always set in here, in our definition, an approximate of 10 forwarding numbers because you have to imagine that every single that every single message in here is in some way added as tokens to your API calls or to your conversation that happens with ChatGPT or whatever LLM provider you use. On the other hand, that means you pay more for more token usage, but you also might run into more hallucinations if you have a massive list of phone numbers right in here. That's why I always suggest limit that to an amount of phone number that is feasible, which could be around 10, but don't go crazy on it. If you wanna go crazy on it, use a more flexible approach that I'm going to show you very soon as well. Now, as you can see, I did the same thing here with three phone numbers. They are literally just separated here. And by the way, if you want to adjust them, all you would do is you could literally just take the JSON and adjust it in Postman right here. Cause Postman basically, as you can see here, it allows you to, to edit stuff. But if you are like me and you like other tools, I'm a big fan of JSON editor online. I could literally just paste this whole JSON in here and I can adjust it a little bit more visual, which in my opinion is sometimes even a bit better than what I have inside of Postman. However, you can obviously do the exact same thing right in here. Just that JSON editor is better in fixing errors. So if I mess up something like this, you can see, show me, and then it basically kind of like highlights you the issue, wherever it is, boom, so I'll be jumping here. So you can understand a little bit better of what is broken and whatnot. Now heading back to Postman, if we're going down, you can see there's another key called function. And this function is basically the definition of the actual tool call that we're going to use inside of Wapi. You will also see some of those information available in the backend once we have created it via the API. Now, obviously the name, we just set it to transfer call. It doesn't need to be transfer call, but I would suggest to keep it something that refers to specifically your needs. Let's say, for example, you only want to transfer the calls to departments. You can even call, you can even rena rename that to transfer to department or transfer call to department, whatever it looks like. This is literally something that you can come up with, which also impacts a little bit on how well the AI interacts with this tool call. For the description right here, the same thing, it is LLM based. So the LLM is going to use that to determine when exactly to call this function during a conversation. I'm just gonna read you what I've written here. Use this function to transfer the call. Only use it when the following instructions that explicitly ask you to use the transfer call function. Okay, that sounds a bit weird. I guess it's the one that I probably took from the WAPI documentation that explicitly ask yes. So I would probably even rewrite that myself to make it a bit better, just fixing the grammar, grammatical issues. 
But this one is a, a very interesting one. Do not call this function unless you are instructed to do so. Since Wapi added that themselves, they probably know that there were a couple of cases where it calls itself. That's why I would probably just keep it in there. Obviously, you can make your very own testing and see how well it behaves by just testing your prompts more often. Because obviously, I think this is one of the biggest tasks, testing your prompt, doing proper prompt engineering. But that's a, a task for another time. But this is uh, important for you to understand that this prompt here or this text is used by the LLMs to help the AI determine when exactly to use this tool call. Now, the next part is the parameters. And this is where you basically define the phone numbers as well. This is just like a selection. So Enum basically just defines like a predefined set of values that it can send through. It just helps the AI to be more precise about what it should select here and, and put in the parameters. Parameters are very easily explained. If you have seen my tool calling video from before, you know that I usually refer to as a menu, which is the tool call or the function call itself. And on the menu, you have the menu items, which are the parameters. So basically the details that are included inside of the menu. Those parameters, like I mentioned, are nothing else than the item on a menu. You just give them some meaning. They have some value, right? And you can refer to that value in the menu. So by just predefining them here, the AI makes it easy and you have a lower error rate because the AI basically pre-selects the values from the string. So all you do is you literally just define the exact same phone numbers that you have defined in the destinations right with an enum. Then the description is the description that you basically have for that parameter. And this is the destination to transfer the call to. So it just defines the phone number. You can even just rename that to the phone number to transfer the call to. And that's basically it. So there's not much more to it. This is also used by the LLM, which also basically increases your token usage a little bit. This field just defines which ones are required. And since there is only one parameter in here that is called destination, as you can see here, this is the only one that is required. So the AI is always instructed to set that field before making the tool call. And that's basically already it of the most core functions that you need to set for making a tool call to transfer a phone number to an actual live agent. Now they have another feature which I've defined down here, which you can also see inside of the example here, if you scroll down, which is messages. Now Wapi is super awesome and it gives you the potential and possibility of defining messages before the call is transferred so that you can basically have a certain or special phrase being said before the AI actually sends the call. So it's not just you say, oh, please transfer me to department A and then the AI just transfers you without saying anything. No, you can actually define a message that is said by the AI before the call is being transferred. Now, one, once we go in the messages, you can, for example, see here that we have uh, the messages, which is an array. And in the array, we have the objects of each of the messages. And here we have selected as a type request start, meaning that this message is set when the phone call basically has been initiated. I think this is the default and the only one that I've seen, but obviously since you can set a type, you can probably even set something like when the forwarding fails or maybe some other kind of status. I don't think it's anything available right now from what I've seen. So request start is the one that you want to look into. Content is obviously whatever the AI or your AI phone caller says while it is transferring your call to an actual human being. And then lastly, you have another field called conditions, which is a very interesting one and super powerful one because it allows you to even define multiple request start messages and you can just conditionalize them, meaning that when, for example, this phone number has been called, only then say this message. Otherwise, say this message for department B. So as you can see, by just defining the parameter, so this is the destination, which we basically send in through the function, uh, through the tool call, Obviously, you can define your own as well. You're not just limited to this one. You can send through whatever you need for the transfer call. If you, for example, say a first name, you can even define the first name here and then you can check against the first name and then say out a custom message. It's another possibility or a department, whatever that looks like, that's completely up to you. But Param basically defines the parameter that you want to check the condition against. The operator is set to equal to EQ, which stands for equal, which basically means that the value which is the phone number, needs to match the destination in order for the condition to be true, which then means that this message is being said through the AI during a call transfer. Now, it sounds a bit complex, but if you read it, it's probably very, very easy and self-explanatory, right? So if I basically say, I'd like to be transferred to department A. Department A is refer reference to this number. This number is mentioned in Enum, as you can see here, and it is mentioned here. So if this destination matches with this number, the AI basically says something like, oh yeah, I'm forwarding your call to the department A, please stay on the line. And with that, you can obviously define multiple ones because the whole messages thing is an array in itself. So you can just define the messages that you would like to have for different phone numbers 
and create those kind of phone calls. Now, this is the explanation about the JSON. Now, if it comes to actually implementing that into your WAPI assistant, what you would need to do, and I'm going to show you that right here. So I simply head over to the WAPI dashboard and just make sure there's no other tool. This is one from my previous video, Get Current Weather. I have it connected to my assistant, so we can just ignore that. But there is no other tool available except the Get Current Weather tool. Now, our goal is obviously to create this call transfer tool that allows us to make the call forwardings. And for doing that, what you would need to do is you would head into your Postman account that you can create or any kind of other website that allows you to do post requests, which can also be Zapier, Make.com or any kind of other no-code automation tool. Then you would basically just define this API right here, which is the endpoint for the, for the tool creation. You will find that as well inside of the documentation of WAPI. So we can simply head over to the WAPI documentation. You go to API reference. And down here, you go to create tool, which then looks something like this. Now you can get all the values from here. For example, this is the endpoint that I literally just added right here. So you can see if I replace it, it's the exact same thing. You can also see in the create tool that it is a post request. So inside of the postman, we need to set this thing to post, which is basically the request type of the request that we are going to send. You set this to post. Down here, you click on body, you click on raw, you select JSON in case it's not selected. And then you simply paste in the JSON that I provide you directly inside of my resource app. And what you would then do is you would obviously go over, you would adjust the phone numbers to the one that you would like the agent to be able to access and make actually live transfers to. And you would adjust the messages. You don't necessarily need to adjust this part. You can do that. I'll just keep it the same as Wapi had it initially. You obviously need to add your enum, your phone numbers here to enum. And you also can set your messages. Like if it's for you enough to only have one message, you could literally just remove this whole part with a comma and you can even remove the conditions, which means you literally have only this one message that is being sent and for any of those numbers. So you don't even need to define all of those messages. I just had them in because they are part of the example that WAPI provides. But obviously this is completely up to you. For my example, now I'm leaving them in here. Once you did that, you need to head over to the authorization tab right here. What you would do then is you head to the auth type, you select bearer token, and you will be able to add the token or your API key right in here. In here. The API key, by the way, you will find in your WAPI dashboard. If you go at the bottom left, click on your email, then you go to API keys, and then you create a private API key. Important, not the public one, the private API key. This is the one you're going to paste here in the token field. Once you've done that, you are ready to go. And all I'm doing now is I click here on send, and if you have set up the JSON properly, you will see as a response, you will get basically the ID of the tool call. You will get some more information when it was created and basically the whole definition of the tool that you just defined. Now, if we're heading now in the WAPI dashboard and I basically refresh tools, just gonna do that by refreshing the page, you will see that now we have an actual tool call for the transfer call function, which is great. Now, just remember, we had to do this through Postman or through an external HTTP because we needed to interact with the API because there is no visual interface for adding multiple phone, phone numbers for call forwarding. Now we can still look at the function by just clicking on it. And you can see in here as well, we have the transfer call function. In the integration tab, there's nothing obviously because it doesn't really have a URL. The tool name is called transfer call. This is the tool description. Destination is predefined here. And you don't see the enum because it's just nothing that WAPI displays visually. Just keep that in mind, it's nothing bad. Everything is set up properly if you have defined it that same way inside of the API and you are literally good to go with the setup. Now, all you need to do if you want to actually use this tool in your assistant, you would head over to assistant, go to functions. You make sure that here, first of all, is obviously nothing anymore in the forwarding phone number field. And then you go here up to tools, you click on that, you select the transfer call function and you click publish. Now, that's literally all you need to do in order to have the transfer call added to your assistant so that you can use it and literally make call transfers. Now, if I would call this assistant now and I would, for example, ask for forward to the, uh, please forward me to department A, it would be able to forward me to department A. And since we're already on it and we have a more advanced example, let me actually just make a test with it so you can actually see that it works. For the backend, by the way, I'm using the template that I have shown you in one of my previous videos, which you can also find uh, in, on my YouTube channel, obviously. It is for how you can work with dynamic variables, which this one is literally the easiest way of doing so. I'm just gonna run this thing once manually so you can actually see that it works. And I'm going to call my number and I will have a call with it and ask to be transferred to, let's say department A. This number is not existent, so the forwarding will not work, but you will see that it actually picks up the function and it will say the messages that we defined inside of here, which is here. I'm forwarding a call to department A, please stay on the line. Now, before doing the call, I noticed that there was one more issue inside of my code that I've just adjusted. 
and which is this message part right here. Now, I initially mentioned that it's used by AI, which is true, but it also means that this is the message is going to be said. It's not just for the AI to determine which number to refer to, it is also the line that is being said. I know that this was different before, so it was just adjusted, which is the reason I wasn't really aware of, but to make sure you already have the latest information, this number or the, the, this message is, like I mentioned, not just the one that the AI uses to determine which number to use, but it's also the message it's going to say. So if this message is defined, and by the way, this message and the message down here needs to be defined. This was a requirement based on what I've heard now from the support. And this is just something I wanted to mention, even though I was explaining you before that this is literally just only for, open, uh, for the AI understanding, which is not the case. Now, since we now know that this message is actually being used for understanding or for, for saying the same message on the phone as well. Now, since we have that out of the way, let's actually make a phone call. Like I've said, these numbers in here are just demo numbers. They don't really exist, but it doesn't matter for us to actually prove the functionality because when the AI says the message, either here, either from here or from here, we basically know that the tool call function works, which is all for me to show you that the proof of concept works and you can literally just add your number and then you will be transferred. All right, I'm just gonna call my agent. Hello, this is Ava. How may I assist you today? Hey Ava, I'm good. Please transfer me to department A. Thank you very much. I can help you with that. Let me transfer your call to department A. Awesome, thank you. I am forwarding your call to department A. Please stay on the line. Perfect. Now it would try to forward me, but the number doesn't exist. So obviously it doesn't forward me directly, but you heard that it said this line right here, which is defined in the number that we would like to transfer to, right? So not only have, do we have the meaning in here, but now we also have the message. In my opinion, it's not the best approach. I would probably like to have the meaning being, or like the AI, L, the LLM input defined in a separate key, and then the message in another separate one. But for now, this seems to be the case and this seems to be the only one that works. So we just accept the fact that it is this way, for now at least. I assume this is gonna be adjusted at some point. This is basically everything I have to say to the second solution that we had, which is having multiple tool calls. And now since we already have covered the majority of the more complex things, I'm going to show you the third solution, which we've already discussed here, which is forwarding to an unlimited set of numbers depending on some other variables or whatever that looks like, right? In my example, like I mentioned, we talk about account manager, so I would like to be referred to an account manager, and then we would like to have that account manager being fetched and then use the number of that account manager, which in this case is Luke, that's the way I call it, to actually forward that phone call. Now, to make this work, it is a little bit more complex than what I've shown you previously, because now we actually go into some more API requests and we need some more features to actually return information, right? Since we obviously need to fetch it. So to actually show you how that works, I'm going to do a couple of things. Number one, what you need to understand before actually diving into the functions is the assistant overrides. This is the way I'm designing that right now. Cause obviously you can fetch information during the callback that I'm going to show you for creating the phone calls. But there's also the way of using the assistant overrides of passing information through which I'm going to do because we have the, the account manager, for example, defined on the person that is currently being called. So the way I'm doing that is, let's for example, take here the example I showed in one of my previous videos, which is for an inbound call that uses dynamic tags and the dynamic tags are basically just added as assistant overrides in the JSON that we create. Now you don't really need to understand that. I will also send you the template here, by the way, so you understand what's going on. All you need to know is that I added basically two variables right within here that are called, as you can see here, account manager name, which you see it's, it's pulsating on the left, and account manager number. Account manager name is basically the name of the person that is the account manager for the actual user that we are trying to call. Let's say, for example, we tried to call me and my account manager is called Alex, which I think is the case here. Let me just scroll down. Yep, he's called Alex. And we also have the phone number defined for Alex, right? And I'm just adding them here to this custom JSON data structure, which you can, by the way, manipulate here on edit or create a new one. This is the way you need to set it up. If you don't know how to do that, feel free to check out the previous videos about dynamic variables. I'm also gonna link that up somewhere here because those are the values we basically need, right? Account manager is the name of the account manager, phone number, the phone number of the account manager, and first name is my name because this is a call, because this is a call that is being made to myself or to whoever you try to call with that account manager. 
<laughs> I hope that's clear enough. All right, we basically then send that information through in the webhook response to create the dynamic assistant and we send through the assistant overrides so we know exactly the variables that are available there. This is important for this use case, but now let's actually dive into the setup of the tool call. Now to make sure we set it up properly, what I'm going to do is we could obviously head again in here. Like I mentioned, the tool call section is not for the setup because there's nothing visually that we can set up for making this work. And there are a couple of more things that we need to do now. We still need to create a tool call. This is number one. So if, if you would like to follow me along, it is definitely the time now to go to the research hub, get the JSONs that I'm going to show you now, because this setup is probably best being guided so you actually understand what happens behind the scenes. Now to actually get started, let's head over to Postman and I'm going here to another request that I pre-created before. This is also a JSON you will find inside of the resource hub, which is called again, transfer call. So it is very, very similar to what we had before, but you can see it is a lot shorter. And why is that? Because it is literally just the function definition and you can see that there are not even any phone numbers added. All we have here is a name, which in my case now is called transfer account manager, because this tool call still of type transfer call. So it's still for call forwarding is called transfer account manager because we would like to transfer this call to the account manager of that user. Now here I also have a slightly different definition that says use this function to transfer the call if the user wants to talk to their account manager. And then we have the again do not call blah 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 at the end. That's the same one we had from within Bappy. As the parameters we also send through again only one parameter which is called destination which is the destination uh, phone number that we, going, that we are going to make the call to. Now this is literally all you need. You can obviously customize that depending on your use case. So if you don't want to have an account manager or you have a different setup, you define it the way you need it for making this tool call. Now, same thing, you're gonna set also the request up like the previous one we did. You basically add the WAPI tool endpoint, you set it to post, you go to authorization, you add your API key, you go to body, click on raw, select JSON, add this JSON, JSON from the resource hub. And all we're going to do now is we click on send and if everything works out, you will see the ID created at, updated at, then you know the function has, or the tool has been actually successfully created. Now, if we now head back into the WAPI dashboard, I'm just gonna refresh. So you will see that there is now a new tool called Transfer Account Manager. If we go into it, it is again part of the tool uh, of the transfer. So there's not much information available in here, except of the destination and the tool details, which is perfectly fine. This is all we need. Now, same thing again, I head over to the assistant, I go to functions, make sure there's nothing in forwarding phone number. And here I would obviously select the transfer account manager function for making the, the call transfers. Now I'm going to publish that part. There's one more thing that is left that we need to handle, which is something that is a bit more complex like the previous step. This is where you really need to pay a lot of attention. So I'm going to first show you how that looks like and what the things mean that I'm doing before I'm actually showing you the template. The way this system works now is that now we already have a function defined, but it has no phone numbers. Like this is all we sent through, so it doesn't know any specific phone numbers. But since we already defined here the meaning or when the AI basically should call this endpoint, it will call it, but it will not call it with a phone number. So what that means in this case is that, let's say for example, we are on the phone with the AI and we say, please transfer me to my account manager. It is not sending, it is not doing any kind of phone transfer call because obviously there is none, right? Now, WAPI in their documentation under API references, if you scroll to the very bottom here in server and client, they have something called server message response, which is something you want to look into because that is also available inside of the dashboard of WAPI, which I'm going to show you. But to be more precise, there is something down here you can see over in the message responses, you will see a setting or a tab called transfer destination request. You click on this one, you open the child attributes and you select number. Now you will have a lot of different attributes here, which you can actually use within Bappy to have a separate request requesting the phone number during a transfer. The way you have to imagine that is that let's for example say we are in a phone call, okay? I'm for example calling the assistant and say, all right, please transfer me to my account manager. Now, in that moment, Bappy does a tool call. It calls the, the, the account manager function that we just created. 
And since there's no phone number connected, what it is going to do it is it tries to request from a different URL the settings or the properties of a specific phone number. It basically wants to get the instructions from there and then use those instructions or details to make a request or a transfer of that phone number. Now, this URL we haven't defined anywhere yet because it doesn't exist. And that is something you can do right here in the advanced tab of your WAPI assistant. So all you would do is you would head over to the advanced tab and if you scroll down here, you will see messaging. Then in messaging, you can add a server URL, which in my case is a make.com webhook. And down here, if you scroll a bit more, you see server messages. And that is where you want to select transfer destination requests. So you can simply click on here, you can scroll down, you select transfer destination requests, and you're going to save this thing. This is what you need to do in the assistant to make sure we actually have an endpoint or a URL set up that we can request a phone number to. Now you probably say to yourself, yeah, Yannis, that's awesome, but I don't have a URL yet. That is true. That is what we come into now. Because the way I set it up is on make.com because it's visual. You can easily replicate it, but you don't need to rely on make. You can even set this up on your own server, on Zapier, on mostly any kind of other platform where you can have a, where you can send a webhook request to and you can get a response from. Now to actually set this up, I have a neat scenario over here, which only has two modules. It has a incoming webhook and it has a webhook response. This is literally all you need. So you can literally just copy this template from my resource hub. What you do is you click down here on the three dots, you go to import blueprint, you put in the file that you just downloaded and you will see something like this. Now, the first thing you do is you click here on the webhook trigger module, you click on add, you create your own webhook URL, you copy this address to the clipboard, click okay here, go to your WAPI dashboard and you replace this one with that URL that you just copied from the scenario. Once it's done, once the server messages with a transfer destination request is selected, you click on publish and the backend of your assistant is ready to go. There's nothing else we need to do. You connected the function here and you went to the advanced tab, you added the server URL and you selected the right server messages. Now, now we come to the fun part, which is obviously the call forwarding. If you set up the template that I showed you before with the assistant overrides properly, meaning that if you set up the data structure the same way, basically these keys all match the exact same ones, you have account manager name set up, etc. You are you can literally use this template right out of the box because it's going to just work, but I'm going to guide you through so you actually understand what happens because the magic happens in this module. So now if we click on it, you can see that I have a JSON right within here that is basically saying the response we want to send based on the server event. Now, this JSON is a result of the server message response uh, manual that you see here. And you basically, you basically can see the exact structure here. We have message response as a key, which obviously is the first one right here. Then we have destination, destination, if you go here, it's defined here, destination. And then in destination, we have type, uh, number check enabled, number extension, message, etc. So all of the values that we basically defined in the JSON right here, and you can see that here, it's set to type number. The number check is enabled, which basically means it just verifies if the number is actually a valid number. And then here we have a very interesting part, which is the, dyna uh, the dynamic number that we fetch from the assistant overrides. Cause in the response, like once you tested that once, you will see in the response data, this is basically what WAPI sends in that server message response. And we can reuse that information inside of the JSON. Now, luckily, WAPI sends over a lot of information. And one of them is here in the assistant at the bottom under variable values, the actual account manager number, right? This is literally the number of that uh, assistant override that we set in the initial setup and the account manager name, which is set to Alex. Now this is incredibly powerful because we just added that in the number and now we can make a dynamic transfer to that number, whatever that was that we basically fetched based on the user from initially to make a transfer to, right? And the same thing here, I have an adjustment to the message, which basically means you will be now transferred to, and then I have the account manager name. So the AI during a transfer would basically say, you will be now transferred to Alex. And that's literally it. Now here you have a description, which is also just helping the AI to understand when to basically use that setup. However, in that case, I think it doesn't even matter. I know that they documented that right here. This is the description of the destination used by the AI to choose, used by the AI to choose when and how to transfer the call. Now, in my opinion, it's not that important because we dynamically load that information, but it is good to have, so I just defined it here, right? Because you never know if stuff breaks, you'll probably just end up with errors and I try to avoid that, so just define this value. But this is 
all you need to make that dynamic setup, meaning that now if I would make a call, Vapi would basically, during the transfer, ask or request the information from the scenario and then make the phone call. So to explain you the whole flow again, let me just actually head over to the Vapi dashboard. So let's assume we're gonna have a call on the phone, right? The AI answers with a first message right here. And then I would say something like, I'd like to speak to my account manager. Then the AI would literally use that function called transfer account manager to try to fetch the phone number. But since there's none connected, what it does is it sends the request to the URL in the advanced tab down here with a message type called uh, server messages, which is this one, transfer destination request. And then it runs through the scenario and where we then basically send back the actual phone number based on the assistant overrides that we defined inside of the initial assistant when we set up the call. And this then transfers the phone number to this actual number. Now, right now there is a bug. I assume it's not gonna be around for long, but right now this custom message is not being set. Instead, it uses the message that is predefined or that is defined inside of the tool definition. Because even for the advanced setting right here, you can still use the exact same messages JSON part right here with a messages key to basically predefine another message for this transfer account manager function or this more advanced function for making dynamic phone transfers. Now, it's important to mention, I guess it's not going to be an issue for long, but I want to make sure you understand that it is an issue right now. And lastly now, before I'm heading off, I'm actually want to I actually want to show you that it works. So what I'm going to do is I'll run this thing once. We have connected here in the Vapi dashboard, right? It's basically set up in the functions. So all we want is if everything is set up correctly, you will now see that this scenario will be executed when I request my account manager, which then should obviously trigger the AI to make a transfer to that number, even though this number doesn't is not a valid number right now. Okay, I'm just gonna call the assistant. Ava, how may I assist you today? Hey Ava, please transfer me to my account manager. Thank you. Transferring the call now. So as you can see, it's trans it ran the scenario and you heard on the phone, it said transferring the call now. Now, if you wonder where this message comes from, let's just head over to the documentation and you can see here under message response destination message, it says if there's nothing provided, neither in the tool call nor in the actual response of the webhook that we just sent over, it says transferring the call now. This is where the message comes from, just so in case you wonder, it is basically their very, very standard default message. Now, heading back to the call forwarding, you can now see that for the call back in the body, you can see that it actually sent through this whole request and you can see that it added the number as well and that here it replaced the name with Alex. Now, I know this was a lot of information and this was a very, very complex setup, but I hope you get the understanding now of those three different types of the solutions that we have available for actually making phone transfers with Vapi. There are obviously a lot of nuances to it and you can customize those things in many, many, many ways, but I hope this gives you a glimpse on how you can set up and work with uh, phone transfers or phone for or call forwardings because it is a powerful feature and we've seen it with our clients many Many, many times that it is a vital thing especially if it comes to more complex requests or maybe even high ticket customers so for high ticket customers we can even preload dynamic dynamically the tools during the call so we can say for those people there is an account manager available and only then they're being transferred over there now that's all i have to say i appreciate your time here if you're really interested in learning more about that, definitely check out the resources on my resource hub. You'll find everything I just shared in the video here. So you can download it, use it for your own agency, use it for your own business, whatever that looks like, whatever you do with the voice agents. And obviously I'm very, very curious seeing what you actually built with voice assistants. So if you have any kind of cool use case and you have anything cool that you built before, feel free to drop it below in the comments. I'd appreciate it. And that's all I have to say for now. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.